Hi, welcome to Hikate's Crossing as we continue the exploration of the supernatural tarot. Okay, so what, I, what I've been doing is going through the suits. I went through the Major Arcana, went through the, um, the Bones, the Goblets, and now the um, Blades. Okay, so what I've been doing is looking at the, um, the characters. Okay, so let's look at the Ace of Blades. Okay, the first blade was notoriously used by Cain to commit humanity's first murder. The Ace of Blades represents power, creation, and destruction, decisive action, and breakthroughs. This tarot card advises you to use your skills and intellect wisely because you're more powerful than you realize. That's an interesting thought. Right. Ooh. So the Two of Blades. The Two of Blades represents a tough decision to be made, particularly in regards to your belief, convictions, and moral compasses. This card advises you to stay too true to yourself. Okay, Three of Blades. Let's have a look. Madison's story is a tale of tragedy and heartbreak, which are major themes of the Three of Blades. Madison was the victim of a werewolf bite, and though she and the hunters searched desperately for a cure, she ultimately realized she would always be dangerous and choose to sacrifice herself to save others. The Three of Blades symbolizes lost sorrows and sometimes betrayal. Okay, so Four of Blades. The Four of Blades suggests it's time for some hard-earned rest and relaxation. You're coming out of a difficult period in your life, and it's time to take a break and allow yourself to process recent events. Number Five of Blades is from the moment of the brothers met Demon Meg Masters. She causes trouble for them, while she eventually becomes a sort of ally to the team. Her presence is almost always a source of discord and tension. Five of Blades is the ultimate conflict card. It symbolizes battles, changes, and fierce disagreements. This tarot card shows you're dealing with a lot of unrest, but keep going, the end of this fight is in sight. Okay. Next we've got Six of Blades, represents a period of rest that follows a struggle to reprieve. A sigh of laying down of swords, this tarot card marks transition from a chaotic phase into a calmer one. Sometimes this card indicates actual travel. Okay, Seven of Blades is from the moment the Winchesters meet Demon Ruby. It's clear she's up to no good. Ruby masterfully seduces and manipulates Sam, looking, hooking him on Demon Blood and eventually convincing him to kill Lilith, thus releasing Lucifer from the cage and starting the apocalypse. The Seven of Blades indicates sneaky behavior and betrayal. This, tarred, this tarot card advises you to stay vigilant and listen to your instincts. If you get the feeling someone's not being entirely honest with you, trust yourself and investigate the situation further. Okay, so Eight of Blades is Constant Welsh is a ghost who gets to meet, who gets men to drive her to a former house, then murders them after tempting them into unfaithfulness. Like many ghosts, she is unable to move on, trapped between life and death by her unwillingness to face the truth of her situation. The Eight of Blade indicates feelings of imprisonment, restriction, and a victim mentality. Though you may feel powerless and victimized, you actually have a lot of control over the situation. Accept the responsibility for your own fate, and you will free yourself. That's an interesting card. Next we have the Nine of Blades. Alistair is a particularly nasty demon in Hell's Grand Inquisitor. He has a particularly affinity for torturing victims, not only physically, but psychologically and emotionally. The Nine of Blades is a tarot card of anxiety, nightmares, and worry. Indicates stress. Suggests you need to make time to consciously relax. Okay, Ten of Blades. Is Adam Milligan's life is filled with painful twists of fate. After growing up thinking he's an only child, Adam discovers he has half-brothers Sam and Dean and is swept into their dark and complicated supernatural world. Eventually, he's even sealed into Lucifer's cage along with Michael, Sam, and Lucifer. The Ten of Blades represents a dramatic turn of events and advises you to stay on your toes and expect the unexpected because you never know what fate has in store for you. Okay, so now we go to the um, page. Page of Blades. Okay, the Page of Blades represent an intelligent but inexperienced young person. Kevin Tran finds himself in overset as, as he becomes suddenly embroiled in the supernatural world as a prophet of God. The Page of Blades advises you to recognize both your talent and skill while acknowledging when you need help or guidance. Okay, that's an interest. Acknowledging you need help and guidance. 
Now you might not have the knowledge that you need. That you need. Okay. okay, next we have, oh sorry, the Knight of Blades is Abaddon, is an intelligent and aggressive sadistic Knight of Hell who leads an uprising against Crowley. Upon discovering that the salesman, as he calls him, has become King of Hell, the Knight of Blades represents an impulsive figure who steps in and takes action when, old, when others falter. If you find yourself stalling or putting something off, this tarot card advises you to act now. Okay. Next one here is the Queen of Blades. High-ranking angel Naomi is a ruthless complicated leader who, according to Castiel, fiercely cares about the safety and well-being of the souls in her charge. Despite her unquestionable brutal methods, the Queen of Blades represents an intelligent, independent, protective figure. This tarot card advises you to be brave and unwavering in the pursuit of what you want. Stand your ground, muster your confidence, and know your worth. It's an interesting. King of Blades. Cain notoriously killed his brother Abel with the first blade and became one of the most feared and legendary demons ever known. The King of Blades represents a powerful figure who gained a strong reputation through his actions over time. This tarot card advises you to lead with an intellect and logic and to rely on the knowledge and skill you've acquired over the years to bring you to success. Okay, we've gone through and read what the cards mean. Now, there's no way you're going, I'm going to rip, um, memorize all that information. There's just no way. I've got a basic idea about what the cards could mean in the moment. So when I'm shuffling and doing a card, I'm going to do what my own intuition tells me. I've got an idea of what the cards could mean when reading the book and go through and do that. But just for a really quick reference, I'm going to go through and just choose one card for the moment. Let's have a look. One card. These are some of the things that I'll go through and do. I might just choose one card for a moment. And here I've got the five of blades. So five of blades. Again, I get that feeling of being in a sort of a no-win situation, maybe finding things are not as I'd like them to be, um, allowing me the sense of um, feeling like I'm just, you know, I might, I might have won a battle, but I may not win the war, so to speak, in the sense of a disappointment, a quarrel, an argument, um, a fight of some sort. So interesting. So what I might do is just choose one card and look at that and reflect on that each day. Another thing I could do is, okay, tell me about my intellect. Tell me about my communication. So I'm thinking about all the things that the swords um, thing. So maybe it's about my plans or ideas. Um, maybe what are my ideals that I'm dealing with? Um, you know, what am I thinking about? Those sort of things, right? So I might pull two cards. First card is the nine of blades. So there might be a lot of worry and stress. Maybe I'm feeling like things could be a bit of a nightmare overall. And then card number two tells me that I could be heartbroken. What an interesting combination here. Yeah. So I might be feeling a little aggressive, a little um, betrayed by the situation. Might be feeling as though things are a little bit dark, a little bit deep. And I need to find a way to bring things into the light. Interesting combination of cards to think about. The other thing you could do is do, okay, so tell me a little. So if I choose three cards from the from this blade suit. So let's have a look. I'm just going to choose three cards from the blade suit. Let me have a look. So the first card is page of blades. So telling me that I haven't, um, I haven't got the um, knowledge yet that I need, and I might need some help or some support to move through it. I might find myself at a bit of a crossroads with the two of blades here. And card number three I've got here is, again, the five of blades. So so here we've got that I need some help, right? I need some support to win the battle that I'm finding myself within the cross, with being at a crossroads. I do find myself needing that support in some way. Because I don't have the knowledge yet. I don't have the knowledge that I need to deal with the decisions that I need to make. 
So I might find myself feeling like um, I'm defeated, that I can't let things seem impossible to achieve. So there we go. There's a few ways to read with the Knight of Blades that I'm doing. So at the moment, just slowly each week, working with, or each, every few weeks, whatever I decide to do, just working with one suit, just getting to know it a little bit easier, just trying to find a way to sort of get to know some of my decks in certain ways, just by diving deep into them, whether it's one card at a time, whether it's six or seven cards at a time, whether it's a suit at a time, there's just different ways of sort of diving a little bit deeper into the deck, getting an understanding of the characters, maybe the extra theme of the deck, it's just different ways just to sort of dive deeper into it and to sort of really connect a little bit deeper with it. So that's it from me. Don't forget to check the links down below. Check the links on my channel. Like, subscribe and ring the bell so you know when the next video will be uploaded. Take care. Blessed be.